Uh, I'm going to, first of all, have Brother Dave uh, just to show you a brief clip, and you'll find this uh, very interesting. That's a lot of rejoicing, right? That's a lot of head bop, bopping and uh, a lot of dancing and jumping up and down. That is a synagogue full of Jewish men, not sure where, that doesn't matter, but uh, they are observing Simchat Torah, that is rejoicing of the law. And of course, Simchat Torah, uh, ended tonight, if I'm not mistaken, at sundown, and uh, it is the fitting end of the annual Torah reading uh, uh, cycle. Like we do here on Sunday mornings, we have our Torah time. Uh, they read through the Torah in a year. It ends and uh, with the book of Deuteronomy, of course, and they begin also then with the book of Genesis. It's a joyful time, not only in the synagogue, but also at home, where Jewish people, they dance and they sing around the Torah scrolls in, in celebration of the law that was given to Israel. And uh, in our Brooklyn neighborhood, I have uh, seen the local kebab uh, synagogue bring it out onto the streets with uh, music and, and games and frivolity. I think that the Torah is certainly something to be rejoiced over. I have no problem with that. I want you to turn tonight, if you will, in your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians 3. I think that the Torah is something to be rejoiced over because according to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it's glorious. In fact, that stated three different times, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 7, if the ministration of death, which is a reference to the Old Covenant, written and engraven in stone was glorious, it was glorious. The Torah is said to be glorious in that seventh verse. Drop down to verse 9. For the ministration of condemnation, that's the, the Old Covenant, be glory. It's glorious. Again, in verse 11, for if that which is done away was glorious, the old covenant was done away with, of course, it was replaced with the new covenant, but it was glorious. And so my point is that the Torah is something to be rejoiced over because it's glorious. In fact, when you read and uh, look at this passage that really is an exposition of what actually took place there in Exodus chapter 33 and 34. It makes reference to the fact that Moses' face glowed with a reflection of both the glory of God and the glory of the Torah that God gave. Look at verse 13, for example and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Remember how he put a veil over his face to cover the glory that was reflected in his face from receiving the Torah. So it's right to rejoice over the Torah. And I would just quickly throw out three passages uh, that uh, tell us that. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16, the prophet says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. The Torah was the rejoicing of the prophet's heart because he saw it as the source of spiritual nourishment and strength in his life. 
or the psalmist in Psalm 19 and verse 8 who says the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. So the Torah is something to rejoice over because it's pure and because of its clear teaching. Again, the psalmist in Psalm 119 and verse 111 says, Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. That is, the Torah is to be rejoiced over because of its good purpose and its promised blessings, the rejoicing of my heart. But listen to me, because I want to submit to you I want to submit to you that Simchat Torah is not real rejoicing. Now stay with me because I want you to understand why I say that. Verse 13 talks about Moses masking up. He put a veil over his face that the children could not steadfastly look to the end of that which was abolished. Moses masked up to hide the fading glory in order to preserve his image, which of course is self-effort on the part of Moses. It is symbolic of the hiding of the old covenant's fading glory, and whenever you hide that, you effectively hinder the Torah from doing its proposed work. You're hiding the truth. And whenever you hide the truth of the Torah, you stimulate human effort. And that's really what is attractive to try to keep the law. And so my point is that Simchat Torah really masks the fading glory of the Old Covenant. It is a man-made human emotion it's a great display of what the flesh can produce. But sadly, as this 2 Corinthians 3 passage reveals, it's a big joke. It's not real rejoicing. And I want to show you why. It's because it's rejoicing over a book that is absolutely veiled to them. It is masked to them. And the irony is that these Jewish people are dancing around a scroll that is absolutely closed to their understanding. They're rejoicing over the wrong thing. They're rejoicing over something that God gives them instead of rejoicing over the giver himself because they really don't know the giver. They're missing the forest, you might say, for the trees. And uh, they're missing the message of the Torah, of course, which is the Messiah himself. It would be kind of like my wife and my kids that uh, would be enthralled over my written biography, but would ignore me and even deny that the book's about me. The point is simply this. It is absolutely impossible to really rejoice over the Torah if you don't even know or if you refuse to acknowledge who the Torah is about. Jesus said this in John chapter 5 and verse 39 to the religious leaders of his day. You think you have life? Search the scriptures. For they are they which testify of me. After his resurrection, he meets two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And they are bummed out because of the death of their Messiah, Jesus. And they don't recognize him at that moment. And he begins to play along with them in order to teach them. This was a, an instructive time for them. And the Bible says that he called them fools and very slow of heart to believe what the scriptures, what the Torah, what the prophets as well had written. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 24 that Jesus showed them from the Torah and from the prophets all these things concerning himself. In fact, it, it, it uh, actually is stated in those very words, beginning at Moses, that is the Torah, and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The Torah 
is about Jesus. And Simchat Torah is a farce because it's really not rejoicing about what the Torah is centered on. It's, uh, it ought to be rejoicing over the Messiah Jesus. That's what the real rejoicing of the Torah is about. And to rejoice over anything else is a sham. It's not real rejoicing. You must have Messiah Jesus as the, as the source and as the point of your rejoicing. In fact, if he's not, then you completely misunderstand what the Torah is about. Look with me, if you will, in verse 14. It says, but their minds were blinded, and it's talking about the people to whom God gave the Torah, the children of Israel, verse 13. The children of Israel, their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Messiah, in Christ. If you miss Messiah Jesus, you misunderstand the Torah. Because the Torah, in order to be understood, you have to see Jesus. You have to see Jesus in it. It says in verse 16, Nevertheless, when it that is the heart of Israel shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. In other words, the only way that anyone can ever comprehend the Torah or the Bible per se is to stop rejecting Messiah Jesus and believe on him. And that's always a personal choice. That's a choice that no one else can make for you. Your rabbi can't make that choice for you. A minister or a priest can't make that choice. It's a personal choice to believe upon Jesus as Messiah and Savior. And when you do, it totally transforms the Torah from being simply carved into stone tablets to be engraved by the Holy Ghost upon your human spirit. Big difference big difference. That's cause for real rejoicing. Rejoicing over Messiah Jesus. He's the very key to understanding the Torah. And then look at verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. If you miss Messiah Jesus, not only do you not understand the Torah, but you are in bondage to that Torah. You're in bondage to the law. When you choose to believe, however, on Messiah Jesus, you know what happens? God's light explodes in your soul. And the Holy Spirit lifts that veil, unmasks the Torah for you, the scriptures for you. And his truth liberates you from all of the curse and the bondage and the spiritual blindness that otherwise you are held in by rejecting Jesus who is the very center and heart of the Torah. And then look at verse 18. But we all that is, whether you be Jew or Gentile, if you are a believer in Jesus the Messiah, we all with open face, that's unmasked, without a veil, with open face, behold as in a glass or a mirror, the glory of God, the glory of the Lord. And as a result are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. When you see Messiah Jesus is what the Torah really is all about. Not only do you understand the Torah, not only are you set free and given liberty from the bondage of law keeping, 
But what happens is that the Messiah, Jesus himself, lights up your whole life with his own glory. And as you look on him in the scripture and expose your heart to him and you depend upon him, you become more and more and more like him. That's what verse 18 tells us. You see, Simchat Torah, rejoicing over the law or the word of God, if I could use that term, is much more than singing and dancing around with a scroll. It is honoring it by opening it up and spending time with God in it and letting the Holy Spirit reveal the glory of God to your heart and seeing what God wants to change in you and then submitting to that and depending upon him to write on your heart and enable you to live by it. Real joy over the Torah can only be found when an individual personally chooses to come into a saving relationship with Messiah Jesus and then spends the rest of their life listening to him and following his will for them. That's where real joy is. That's what real joy is about. And so I would simply say to those of you that uh, have not yet ever come to believe upon the Lord Jesus, remember to believe about him is not the same thing as believing upon him. To believe about him is simply to have a head knowledge of perhaps what the Bible says. To believe on him or to believe upon him is to believe that he is who the Bible says he is, who the Torah presents him as, not only Israel's Messiah, but the suffering servant of the Lord that laid down his life for all of us individuals as sinners that he might offer to us by his once and for all sacrifice the forgiveness of sin, the cleansing, the atonement by the blood sacrifice of the Lamb of God which John says taketh away the sin of the world. There's the core and there is the basis for not just one but ongoing joy, real joy. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for revealing your Son to us in the Scripture. You said, Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance in the uttermost part of the earth. I pray, Lord, that you would use this challenge, simple passage here in 2 Corinthians 3, to cause our hearts to think deeply about our relationship with you based upon who Jesus the Messiah is and how ironic it is to simply rejoice in a book and not know the author of the book and not know personally the one that the book reveals to us and is all about. Open the eyes, Lord, that are blind. Remove that mask, remove that veil from the heart that the heart would be open to receive the very message of the Torah, the very message of the Scripture, and that is Jesus as Savior, as Messiah, as Lord, as Son of God, as coming King. We pray this in His name.